Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Leticia. I've been a realtor for 15 years and we bring you information from the experts. And I'm Sal. I'm the co-host. I'm a loan officer for the past 20 plus years. And we're with the Reba Show. Homeownership, hear it from the experts. And here on the Reba Show, we bring experts in the respective field to give you information as to the home buying process, if you're uh, sustaining your home or if you're looking to sell your home covering all the industry, lenders, realtors, title company, escrow officers, insurance agents, all volunteering their time to bring you information that you can use. Our guests are experts when it comes to home ownership, whether you're buying for the first time or whether you're maintaining or sustaining the home you currently have. Or selling. Home ownership, hear it from the experts in the Blue Stream. Jump in. Programming for The Reba Show is proudly underwritten in part by the Arlington Tomorrow Foundation, contributing to a thriving Arlington, and in part by the Texas Association of Realtors Housing Opportunity Foundation. Funding is also provided by generous donations from listeners like you. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on The Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, I'm Leticia. I've been a realtor for 15 years, and we bring you information from the experts. And I'm Sal. I'm the co-host. I'm a loan officer for the past 20 plus. Hear it from the experts. Live from the Fishbowl Radio Network at Globe Life Park, Arlington, Texas, the American Dream City. My name is Leticia Gallegos, President and CEO of the Hispanic Real Estate Brokers Association. And co-hosting with me today is Salvador Villalobos, 2020 uh, Community Outreach Director. Yes, and we're happy that you're here with us today. We've got a great topic today, right, Sal? Yes, we do, as we do every week. That, absolutely. And so today we want to talk to you, listeners, about managing debt. Now, when we talk about managing debt, um, it, it's, it covers a lot of things. So we, in, in, when we're talking about managing, we ha we're gonna, what we're going to do today is we're going to define debt and credit and how they differ. Right. Because there's a difference between debt and your credit. Correct. And so we're going to define phrases and terms commonly used to discuss debt, and we're going to provide strategies for reducing debt. Okay. And, and all this information is coming from the uh, Money Smart curriculum. So yes. we're not just making it up on the fly. <laughs> yeah, the uh, we're very proud to uh, partner with the uh, FDIC to bring you the Money Smart curriculum. So this comes straight from from that right. curriculum, and that's available to you if you'd like more information. Please email us, and we'll get that uh, information to you. You can email us at reba show at reba connect dot org. And how do you spell reba? H R E B A. That's right. All right. So. Um, Let's, uh, we're also going to provide you with an overview of student loan debt. Now, we see or we know that there's tons of student loan, loan debt out there. Correct. Yes. And uh, there's also a lot of medical debt. So we're going to talk about those specifically as we go along through our program. So our first question today is, what is debt? Debt is money that you have borrowed already. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that is that is definitely an answer, and and so the the key takeaway from from what we're going to talk about here 
right now is understanding debt is the first step to managing it. Correct. So we have to understand it. So what is credit compared to debt? Well, credit is the ability to borrow money that you haven't borrowed yet. Okay. Right? So a good summary is debt is money that you've already borrowed. Right. And credit is the ability to borrow it. That's correct. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, so, uh, so what is a debtor then? A debtor is somebody that owes money. A I debtor? owe on my mortgage. I owe on a car payment. I owe on a credit card. Mm -hmm. I owe my cousin Tommy some money. I'm a debtor to him. It's <laughs> money that I have to take in consideration. Right. So it's another word for um, for a borrower when right. we're talking borrower. about right. home ownership and when you're looking for a mortgage, you're, a bar you're considered a borrower. Well, That's also a debtor right. once you have the debt. The, right. Okay. And a creditor. Creditor or lender mm -hmm. uh, is somebody that lends you the money, that borrows you the money, however you word it. It can be an organization, a person, a business. Uh, they lend money to the debtor mm -hmm. or soon to be debtor. Okay. And so um, we are home ownership here at From the Experts, right. this show. So why do we need to know about managing debt when we're talking about home ownership, Sal? Well, I mean, in all aspects of your life, uh, if you don't manage your debt correctly, that's going to impact the, your ability to be a debtor. Uh, you want to buy a home, mm -hmm. you may still buy the home, but at a much elevated uh, interest rate, at a much elevated down payment. Mm -hmm. Or you have uh, you want to get car insurance. They look at your credit. That may indirectly impact your, um, your monthly or annual premium, mm -hmm. which then is going to impact your monthly expenses. Okay, so, so overall, what we want to talk about today about is managing that debt correct to because when you manage that debt it also affects your credit score. your credit score yes. your ability to borrow money um, you know your ability for many things I mean buying a house uh, credit buying a car you want to get a cell phone you know mm -hmm. it impacts every aspect of your life okay so to, yeah so so to understand debt it's important to know a few things correct number one who you owe Right. Okay. And you as a lender, you tell people, you know, have you reviewed your credit report? Right. That kind of thing. Look at so it once a year. Yes. Know who exactly. you're, because you may not owe that person. <laughs> exactly. And how much you owe them right. is important to know. Exactly. And how much the payments are and when the payments are due and other important facts right. like that. Sometimes I get calls uh, or when we're reviewing their credit, they're like, well, how much do I owe? I've made so many payments. Well, your interest rate is quite high so the amount of of the of, of your uh, funds that are being or your monthly payments being allocated to your principal balance is much less than what's being applied towards your interest mm -hmm. and that is directly related to how you manage your credit exactly and it's also important to think about why you incurred the debt uh, uh, such as to purchase assets right that's how you incur debt what would you consider an asset an asset, oh gosh, car, house, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you, you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, so pay your bills, that's important. Right. Uh, cover unexpected ex uh, expenses or emergencies. Well, you know, uh, as a lender, we always tell our clients, you know, you want to have three to six months worth of reserves mm -hmm. in case a, a one-off does happen. You know, uh, somebody gets sick, they can't go to work. Uh, or it's the flu and one is off one week, the next week, that's going to impact your bills if you don't have some savings to, to weather the storms. Exactly. And we'll talk about, we'll talk more about that in a minute. So let's talk about um, the kinds of dates. So, so we have installment loans and mm -hmm. then we have revolving credit. Right. Okay. So when we talk about those two um, listeners, if, 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 uh, listen carefully because there's a difference between an installment loan right. and a revolving credit. So what would be an example of an installment loan? A student loan, a mortgage, a car payment, a unsecured installment loan, as it says in the word. I mean, so you're making payments every month based on a payment schedule mm -hmm. that was given to you mm -hmm. at the time of the consummation or when you closed on that loan whether it's a car, a house, 
an, a student loan or some, uh, you know, even um, a home improvement loan mm -hmm. uh, where it's a loan, not the line of credit. You know what your payments are going to be month in, month out. And every month, a bit of that payment gets allocated more towards principal and a little less towards interest. Mm -hmm. So at the midpoint, you should be m tilted more towards paying down your principal than what you're sending towards interest. Right. For, uh, for our listeners that don't have a mortgage yet, uh, that are preparing and preparing themselves to purchase home. So an installment would be something like if you bought a TV right. at, at a, a, a store, you know, right. and things like that. So it's, it's the, the payment and interest that you pay over a term. Right. Such as, you know, your, your local uh, furniture stores. Yeah, exactly. Furniture they'll have, is right, another they'll one. have uh, pay installment plans, payment plans, mm -hmm. where if you go to a, a big box or a larger uh, company, uh, they'll usually uh, uh, have you apply for a credit card, which is revolving line of credit, correct? Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and talk about revolving right. credit. So revolving credit is, cr uh, they give you a line, Let's a maximum, a maximum credit, credit limit. Yeah, let's say that limit is $1,000. You can use it and pay it off, use it and pay it off as you need to or as you want to, hopefully as you need to. Um, but your interest is uh, charged on the amount that you owe at any given time. You can pay it down, not have any interest. You, uh, you access those funds again, go to dinner, pay for a tea, uh, pay for uh, a phone, whatever you pay. I mean, you're just increasing the balance, paying it down, but you need to be careful because you're paying interest mm -hmm. uh, variable. It's a variable interest rate. You're not, uh, it's tied, typic uh, tech, uh, typically it's tied to your prime rate. The prime rate can fluctuate monthly. You'll find that uh, uh, indicator or that prime rate index on uh, the Wall Street Journal, the first uh, Wednesday of the month. So you need to be careful with that. Most of the time, your minimum payment does not cover enough. Uh, they say that the typical debt is takes about eight years if you're just sending the minimum payment, in some cases even longer than that, mm -hmm. depending on how much you owe. So when you're paying revolving debt, you always want to pay more than what is requ required from you. You want to pay that debt as quickly as possible because let's say that you have a limit of $1,000 or let's say $500 and you have a monthly payment of $25, but your balance is $475, $476, let's say. Mm -hmm. One, uh, your credit's already impacted because you're going over the standard 30% uh, utilization, which means you should keep your, your line of credit used roughly around 30% of the total limit. So let's say you're at 476 and now you have a monthly payment of four of $25. You have now gone over your limit. Mm -hmm. Your credit score is going to take a pretty su substantial uh, hit because you've gone over your limit of your credit. It's already gone. It's already a little, uh, it's been impacted. You've gone over 50, you've gone over 75. Now you've gone over the limit. It's really impacted your scores. That's why we're always, we're always saying pay more than the required amount. The ideal, yeah, right. the ideal thing would be to pay it off at the end of the month. Correct. Pay so, no interest within okay. that grace period. Exactly. Within 25 days. Right. So when you're building, uh, when you're building your credit, let's say you're, you're wanting to buy a home and you are told by your lender that you need to build some credit. Correct. They usually recommend that you get a credit card if you Correct. don't already have one and that you charge on it pay almost all of it off, maybe leave $10 on right. it, something like that, that will build your credit. Correct. And, the, and then, of course, there's secured credit cards and all that. Correct. So we because will discuss that today. They're looking at the utilization of credit. It's mm -hmm. also, it's not good to have, say, five credit cards with no balances. Mm -hmm. That is also um, because they're, they're, they're anticipating that once you buy a home, now you're going to be spending all this money on your credit card, so it's going to impact your scores. So utilization of credit, knowing how to use credit before you buy your home is important. Um, pay your groceries on there. Put your gas. Every couple of weeks, just put it a, a little reminder on your phone. Hey, it's time to pay it in full. Okay. You know? And that yeah. helps you increase that score. 
Okay. So uh, we're talking about managing debt. Listener, if, if you just tuned in, we're talking about managing debt. And uh, so let's now talk, Sal, about reducing debt because okay. that's part of managing your debt. Le you already have debt. That's why you're listening to us. So now let's talk about reducing your debt. So let's discuss some strategies for reducing the debt and managing it. So when we're talking about reducing debt, there's two strategies that are recommended. So the first strategy is called the high cost debt first method. Right. Okay. So explain some of that. Um, it's where you pay your highest, uh, what costs you the most. You may have a balance, say of 5,000 on one card, 10,000 mm -hmm. on the other. In your mind, I should pay off that $10,000 debt first. Because it's more. It's more. But let's say your interest rate on that 5% is 27%. You mm -hmm. were laid on a few times on your card. It's 27% where the credit card with 10,000 has a introductory rate of, I don't know, 8%, let's say. Mm-hmm. I would say if you have the ability, pay that five thousand dollars off because you're saving yourself almost, uh, tw you know, what is it, eighteen percent in interest. The one with the highest interest rate, right? Would go. Would, with, that's the one you need to I, focus on paying right. first, based on this method, the high cost debt first right. method. And is that the high balance? It's the high, high cost. cost, right? How much is costing you to because keep you that? You may have a balance card. of seven five percent on a credit card, mm -hmm. but you have another credit card with 27%. That's the one you want to attack. That's 18% to 20% that you can be using to pay off some other debt. Mm -hmm. Then there's another method. Right. It's called the snowball method. That's when you go skiing. No. <laughs> um, it's when you pay off uh, the debt with the lowest balances. That's not a bad, especially if you don't have the ability to pay off a higher balance uh, account. This is a nice way of being able to start making a dent on your monthly payments mm -hmm. so that you can start attacking. Let's say that you have 10 cards with small balances or five cards with small balances totaling $200. You may be able to uh, uh, reduce that debt within the next six months and save yourself $200 a month where you can apply those same $200 towards another, um, uh, another card. Right. So let's say that other payments fifty dollars you can send two fifty every month to liquidate that account of of, uh, of five hundred and then right. if you get your income tax check you know you, you attack the rest that's a nice way of doing it as well you know okay limit the well I'm gonna put it in the bank I'm gonna earn three percent well why don't you just pay off your debt and not use it again and save yourself 15 20 30 percent it's a better deal exactly so we're going to take a quick break, I don't want to. Sal. <laughs> and uh, when we come back, we're going to see which, I mean, you decide which strategy is better for you. It, it depends on your situation and your right. preferences. So we're going to go into a little more detail about the high cost debt first method and the snowball method. And then right. you can decide which best for you. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll do that. S right. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on The Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, I'm Leticia. I've been a realtor for 15 years, and we bring you information from the experts. And I'm Sal. I'm the co-host. I'm a loan officer for the past 20 plus years. And we're with The Reba Show, homeownership here from the experts. And here on The Reba Show, we bring experts in the respective field to give you information as to the home buying process, if you're uh, sustaining your home, or if you're looking to sell your home covering all the industry, lenders, realtors, title company, escrow officers, insurance agents, all volunteering their time to bring you information that you can use. Our guests are experts when it comes to home ownership, whether you're buying for the first time or whether you're maintaining or sustaining the home you currently have. Or selling. Home ownership, hear it from the experts in the Blue Stream. Jump in. 
Programming for The Reba Show is proudly underwritten in part by the Arlington Tomorrow Foundation, contributing to a thriving Arlington, and in part by the Texas Association of Realtors Housing Opportunity Foundation. Funding is also provided by generous donations from listeners like you. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on The Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, I'm Leticia. I've been a realtor for 15 years, and we bring you information from the experts. And I'm Sal. I'm the co-host. I'm a loan officer for the past 20 plus years. And we're with The Reba Show, homeownership here from the experts. And here on The Reba Show, we bring experts in the respective field to give you information as to the home buying process, if you're uh, sustaining your home, or if you're looking to sell your home covering all the industry, lenders, realtors, title company, escrow officers, insurance agents, all volunteering their time to bring you information that you can use. Our guests are experts when it comes to home ownership, whether you're buying for the first time or whether you're maintaining or sustaining the home you currently have. Or selling. Home ownership, hear it from the experts in the Blue Stream. Jump in. Programming for The Reba Show is proudly underwritten in part by the Arlington Tomorrow Foundation, contributing to a thriving Arlington, and in part by the Texas Association of Realtors Housing Opportunity Foundation. Funding is also provided by generous donations from listeners like you. Like you. Hello, you're listening to the Reba Show, Homeownership Hear It from the Experts, live from the Fishbowl Radio Network at Globe Life Park, Arlington, Texas, the American Dream City. So we have been talking today about managing debt. Yes, we have. And it's very important to manage debt, especially when it comes to home ownership. Uh, so and sustainable home ownership, right. because uh, it's one thing to buy your home. Uh, it's another thing to sustain it. Right. And so managing your debt is really, really important when you're, when you uh, are a homeowner and as you prepare right. to become one. And I'm uh, very happy to co- be co-hosting with Leticia Gallegos. This is Salvador Villalobos. We are from Riva, the Hispanic uh, Brokers, Real, Real Estate Brokers Association. Yeah. All, All right. right. So uh, when right before the break, we were talking about... Um, uh, plans to reduce debt. So yes, there's two methods that we talked about. The first one is high cost debt first right. method. So let's continue to talk about that. There's some advantages and some disadvantages. So the advantage to doing the high cost debt first method is that that's to refresh memories. It's it's to pay off uh, debt that has the highest interest rate Correct. first. So the advantage to that is you save money because you pay less interest, Correct. right? Do you want to pay 5% interest or do you want to pay 25% interest? Right. right. And if you have something that you're paying 25% interest on, you want to get rid of that right. debt first. A disadvantage is um, the progress may feel slower. Correct. Okay. So... Um, it might feel slower, but mm-hmm. given that uh, tis the season for... Uh, filing your taxes, you may be getting a refund. That may be the best way to allocate those funds than taking a trip, buying clothes, mm-hmm. buying, you know, a Game Boy or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> no, it's it, because yeah. I've hurt somebody. Oh, I'm going to get my kid a, you know, like a $400 gaming system. Hey, exactly. it's beautiful. It's a beautiful sentiment, but let's get you into a home. Let's pay up down your debt to, uh, to reach that goal. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And paying, you, you had mentioned earlier, Sal, that paying extra 
Correct. Uh, would would also help Correct. pay down that debt. Okay. So if you, uh, listener, want have a question about what we're talking about managing debt today, please join our conversation. Call us at 214-431-5032, and we'll be happy to uh, answer your questions if we can. So the next method mm -hmm. that is used, and again, we are talking, uh, bringing you actually the Money Spark money smart curriculum from FDIC that we use at our workshops and when we do our outreach. So the second method is called the snowball method. Right. Okay, so there's an advantage and a disadvantage to that as well. Right. The the advantage on the the snowball uh, method is that you are eliminating debt more trade lines or more uh, creditors faster because they're smaller uh, balances. You may owe a creditor or a collection agency, $75, pay them off. You owe somebody else 150, you pay them off. Mm -hmm. Then you owe the next person that you owe 250, you pay them off. Is it easy? No, it's not easy, but there is a, a true um, reasoning for it. Uh, you have some goals. The yeah, goals either you're buy making, a home or. Yeah, you're you know. making progress faster, which exactly. is motivating. Absolutely. Exactly, mm -hmm. it's very motivating. Yeah. Then you can start attacking your larger balance accounts because now you have more disposable income to use to pay off those other larger accounts. Okay, and what's the disadvantage? That you're paying more money. You're paying more money. You're not seeing the biggest progress on your larger accounts, but remember, it is a process. It is mm -hmm. not something that you're gonna get there overnight. And once you're done with all of it, it's, mm -hmm. it's very re refreshing, it's rewarding, you, you accomplished it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so when we were talking about th those kinds of methods of paying, we were talking a lot about revolving credit. Correct. And so let's take on, you, you're ready to take on this battle here, Sal. We're going to talk about dealing with student loan debt. I love it. <laughs> so there is lots and lots of on. student loan debt. Right. Uh, a few trillion. Yes. It's huge. So, Let's talk about strategies. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what is a student loan debt? So when we look for a description, for a, an, an explanation of what is student loan debt, it's the amount of money someone owes for student loans. It's, it, that's what it's called, a student loan debt. Mm -hmm. For some people, student loan debt will be the biggest debt they ever have. Even more so than a home, I think. Yeah, I see some doctors uh, yes. with three, four hundred thousand in in student huge, loans. Huge, huge amounts of student loan debt. They'll pay it off like in two weeks after they become doctors. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> Dealing with student loan debt can sometimes be stressful. It's very stressful. It's very stressful. Uh, because you went to school to get a great career, and sometimes you don't get there fast enough. You know, as far as a, a, your income. Right. I mean, and know that there are repayment options and that you can reach out for help. Exactly. And we're gonna give you uh, the information that you need to Sometimes do that. Sometimes one of the biggest uh, stumbling blocks are the student loans. Yes, they help you obtain your, your, more, your uh, career, and uh, you know, your first few years you may not be earning as much because entry level, but eventually you will be earning that. But there's some great, um, you said reach out. People in certain uh, professions, nurses, doctors, Sometimes they can eliminate that debt by uh, joining a, a P, uh, the Peace Corps or some kind of uh, organization where uh, if it's a student, a federal student loan, they may get some kind of relief from that. But, you know, talk to your to your uh, servicer and to your uh, school administrators so that they can or financial counselor so that they can gear you mm -hmm. so they can uh, um, uh, uh, guide you, guide you, mm -hmm. not gear you guide you yeah all right so so let me ask you I'm gonna ask these questions and for you listeners uh, check check off the boxes okay so how has your student loan debt affected you there's there's uh, lots of reasons or lots of ways that it has affected you mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go through these questions uh, quickly and you think in your mind how this has affected you because I know that you're listening and I know that you're almost drowning in student debt and uh, this information will help you you know a lot of times we don't want to think about right. about it you know if we don't think about it it doesn't exist right. kind of thing but um, so listen to this 
So these are the questions. These may apply to you, they may not. I'm paying more in fees and interest. Part of my paycheck was taken from me to repay the loans. Money was taken from my account at a financial institution to repay the loan. My tax refund was withheld to pay the loan. I had to take one or more semesters off. I can't get more federal student aid. There are negative entries on my credit reports. My credit scores went down. I'm unable to borrow money. I'm stressed out because I can't pay my student loans. I can't reach my other goals or I don't know. Right. And that I don't know needs to change. Uh, you need to really be on top of it. So those are, those are really important questions. Um, I mean, things that are happening out there. So types of student loans, there's two, there's two types of student Can loans. Can I just touch on something? We, we went over that information, all the, is this you? But it also impacts parents. Parents uh, sometimes sign or co-sign for their, their children. And when they want to make them, and, and it's very important that we as, as children or as parents understand when we sign for our kids or when they sign for us. Why? Because their payment uh, history is going to affect the parent who's trying to buy a house who is retiring and wants to move to another location, this will actually impact their scores as well and, and maybe their ability to, to, to progress themselves. So it's very imp you're not the only one that's being affected here as a student. Yes, you're, you're, you're impacting your own score, but you're also impacting that of your parents. So be cognizant of that, and uh, you know, it's just not going to go away. And I bring it up because I do see quite a bit of that mm -hmm. on both sides as a child, who's uh, borrowing the money and the parent mm -hmm. who's co-signing for them. Right. Okay, right. The, very important. So, so the two types of student loans are private student loans and then there's federal student loans. Right. Okay, so the private student loans are non-federal loans made by a lender such as a bank, credit union, a state agency, school, or other lender. Those are private. Right. When you talk about co-signing, are you talking about the, those kinds of private exactly, loans? Exactly, those private loans. Yeah. So federal student loans are offered by the federal government. Okay. So the Department of Education provides a table that compares federal and private student loans. So we're going to give you a website, a uh, listener to check. It's called uh, studentaid.gov, www.studentaid.gov. Uh, one word and search for federal private federal private those two words search in their search for for federal private this section only covers federal student loans okay so so that way you can you can check check that out right. it gives you some grunt mother more great information okay so when we, we're talking about federal student loan let's talk about repayment options okay so what are our repayment options when we're when we're talking about federal student loans. So you must begin repaying federal student loans after a grace period. Usually about six months. Okay. After you. Exactly. That's either after you. Complete uh, school. Complete school. You drop out of school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. so you take fewer credits than right. required by the loan because the loan has a, right. a minimum credit. Okay, so when it's time to start paying back federal student loans, you will deal with the loan servicer. Correct. Okay, and the loan servicer handles billing and other services for federal student loans during the repayment period. Right. That's what they do. And there's usually about four, uh, three different uh, options that you can have. Well, actually, there's four. Um, there's, uh, there's a little bit more than that. Yeah. But the some. ones that I see the most mm -hmm. is uh, the standard repayment plan. Right. Uh, this is default uh, option. If you do nothing, you, you go under the standard repayment plan. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the graduated repayment plan, an extended plan that extends your payment. Uh, you have the pay as you earn um, plan and uh, based on your income. And income based. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, from a lender standpoint, we only take the standard repayment plan. We do not consider the extended because it's never guaranteed. It can change mm -hmm. at any time. The pay as you earn, the pay as you, um, or the income-based repayment plan, 
those can change because uh, it's depending on the amount of income you make, the higher okay. your income. Okay, so what, are you, what you're saying is that when you're considering a borrower. For a loan, for a for mortgage. A, for a mortgage loan. Right. You, and, we, and this is probably standard for most uh, mortgage companies. Fannie, Freddie. FHA yeah VA. is the standard repayment the plan. standard repayment plan uh -huh. uh, you'll say well that's the plan I'm in I'm only required to pay $60 a month mm -hmm. fantastic but the reality is once that payment plan uh, terminates or expires or you no longer qualify based on your income the following year when you apply you're talking about others other than the standard other than the standard okay. right the uh -huh. extent uh, the graduated extended you yeah. know, pay as you earn mm-hmm uh, the lender has a responsibility to the home buyer uh, or the homeowner. We need to make sure that they're going to be able to repay their mortgage payment repay and pay their bills. So we need to take the standardized payment. We will ask the um, applicant to go to, the stand to their servicer and uh, select the, not to change the payment plan, but just to select what the payment would be under the standard repayment plan. Otherwise, we're going to take a percentage, which is going to be much higher than the mm -hmm. standard plan, and they may not qualify otherwise. So you may only require, based on that current payment plan, say pay as you earn or extended mm -hmm. $50, $60, but your standard pay payment plan w is 500 We need to yeah. qualify you in that $500. We want you to succeed. We don't want you to just put you in a home. Okay. All right. All right. So, so then there, uh, the Department of Education does provide a repayment estimator tool. Exactly. And uh, it can show you what plan or plans you may qualify for and give you more information. Right. So, you, again, you go to the same website. Uh, and, again, uh, listeners, we're, our, we are, our subject today is managing debt. And the, uh, we're talking specifically about managing student loan debt. At this point, if you'd like to join the conversation, 214-431-5032. So the estimator, the repayment estimator is at www.studentaid.gov, and then you search for repayment estimator, Correct. and that'll help you there. All right, so uh, let's talk now about forbearance and deferment. All right. Okay, so the... Uh, the forbearance or the deferment may also be options. So let's let's give our um, definition. The forbearance is a temporary postponement or reduction of payments for a period of time because you are experiencing financial difficulty. Correct. Okay. And the deferment is a temporary suspension of loan payments for specific situations such as re-enrollment in school, right. unemployment, or economic hardship. Right. Okay. So the defer the payments um, doesn't mean you don't owe them. It mm -hmm. just means they're they're being put on a, a hiatus, if you will, uh, for a small period, uh, a short period of time, or a year. Um, just because you're not, not required to make a payment does not mean that, and I have to bring this back to the lending side, mm -hmm. um, we need to still consider that payment because it's still just a deferment. It's not a uh, liquidation of debt. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it does. Yeah. All right. So then we have loan forgiveness, cancellation, and discharge. Right. So you're responsible for repaying your student loans even if you cannot find a job related to your area of study, mm -hmm. uh, are unhappy with the education you paid for with your loan, right? Yeah, I mean all that you're still you're so, still responsible. It's like if you buy a house, you're not happy with your house, you just can't say I'm not going to pay it. Same principle. Mm hmm. Yeah. However, under certain circumstances, your right. your federal student loans may be forgiven, canceled, or discharged. And again, you go to that website www.studentaid.gov to find out more about these options. Uh, for example, there's a closed school discharge, mm -hmm. uh, teacher loan forgiveness. Um, that, pub that public, what I was talking about earlier, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, public service loan forgiveness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and a discharge due to death. Right. Or you're permanently disabled, total or permanently disabled. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that you need to our options our options yeah okay so when um so take action to prevent default 
So what are things that we can do to take action to? First and foremost, contact your servicer and let them know your challenges. See mm -hmm. what options are available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you just can't say, well, I can't make the payments and I'll just let it go. Yeah, see if you can change your payment due date. Exactly. Uh, re review different repayment plan options. Right. And they'll, they'll give you the options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if you apply for a repayment plan, continue making payments on your loans. Right. Um, if possible, until you receive official notification of your new repayment plan. Correct. You continue to make those payments. And if you can, let's say you're only required to pay 50, but you can pay 75. Pay those 75. You'll mm -hmm. be much better for it. Unless you have other debt that you can apply that extra 25 to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And always, with like everything else, Sal, we have to beware of student loan scams. Right. So some companies may advertise that you, they, they can help you um, repay your loans quicker and cheaper or get them forgiven altogether. Be cautious right. of that. Uh, some of these companies are running scams. Especially if they're charging you. Especially if there's an upfront fee, for sure. Go to the Better Business Bureau. They'll have <laughs> something. Or just, you know, do your due diligence on a company. Go exactly. Google them, look at reviews, Absolutely. Better Business Bureau. You know, but first and foremost, go to your uh, servicer, ask them what they, how they can help you. Exactly. So, th so that's the end of our uh, student debt mm -hmm. uh, talk. When we come back, we're going to take a short break. Uh, your uh -huh. student loan debt. If it's a federal loan and you want to get a federal, mor uh, federal subsidized mortgage or um, a mortgage through FHA or VA, you can't be late for 12 months. Uh, to be even considered taking out a mortgage yeah. with the, because it's one federal, you can't be late on another federal loan. That's, it's important, especially if you're going to buy a house. You always want to be able to make your mortgage payment, your student loan payments, but. Yeah, uh, that's good to know yeah. uh, because especially when you're looking to purchase a home, you have to be on federal student loans. You have to be current. Correct. All right. So when, uh, if you'd like to join our conversation, next we're going to be talking about managing medical debt. What? Now, how many of us have medical debt? Uh, give us a call, 214-431-5032. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be talking about medical debt. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on The Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, I'm Leticia. I've been a realtor for 15 years, and we bring you information from the experts. And I'm Sal. I'm the co-host. I'm a loan officer for the past 20 plus years. And we're with The Reba Show, homeownership here at From the Experts. And here on The Reba Show, we bring experts in the respective field to give you information as to the home buying process, if you're uh, sustaining your home, or if you're looking to sell your home covering all the industry, lenders, realtors, title company, escrow officers, insurance agents, all volunteering their time to bring you information that you can use. Our guests are experts when it comes to home ownership, whether you're buying for the first time or whether you're maintaining or sustaining the home you currently have. Or selling. Home ownership, hear it from the experts in the Blue Stream. Jump in. Programming for The Reba Show is proudly underwritten in part by the Arlington Tomorrow Foundation, contributing to a thriving Arlington, and in part by the Texas Association of Realtors Housing Opportunity Foundation. Funding is also provided by generous donations from listeners like you. Hey, 
Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on the Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2 on the Blue Stream. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Leticia. I've been a realtor for 15 years and we bring you information from the experts. And I'm Sal. I'm the co-host. I'm a loan officer for the past 20 plus years. And we're with the Reba Show. Homeownership, hear it from the experts. And here on the Reba Show, we bring experts in the respective field to give you information as to the home buying process, if you're sustaining your home or if you're looking to sell your home covering all the industry, lenders, realtors, title company, escrow officers, insurance agents, all volunteering their time to bring you information that you can use. Our guests are experts when it comes to home ownership, whether you're buying for the first time or whether you're maintaining or sustaining the home you currently have. Or selling. Home ownership, hear it from the experts in the Blue Stream. Jump in. Programming for The Reba Show is proudly underwritten in part by the Arlington Tomorrow Foundation, contributing to a thriving Arlington, and in part by the Texas Association of Realtors Housing Opportunity Foundation. Funding is also provided by generous donations from listeners like you. Live from Fishbowl Radio Network at the Globe Life Park, Arlington, Texas, the American Dream City. My name is Leticia Gallegos, President and CEO of the Hispanic Real Estate Brokers Association, Reba. And with me today, Sal. It's Sal Villalobos, Yay. the 2020 Community Outreach Director. Yes. Reaching out. Reaching out to the community. We're doing some great things in the community, y'all. <laughs> and uh, yeah. y'all, I'm from Texas. And uh, about a golf outing in a little bit. Yeah, and we've got a lot of things going on. So stay tuned. If you have not liked on Facebook, if you are on, are on Facebook and you haven't liked our uh, Reba show, please do that. That way you can stay tuned with uh, topics that we have coming up on the Reba show. And then also at Reba Connect for our outreach events and as well. Reba is spelled... H, mm-hmm. oh. H-R-E-B-A. Right. And that is the acronym for Hispanic Real Estate Brokers Association. So Reba Show. Right. So before we uh, went on break, we were talking about managing debt. That's our topic today, managing all kinds of debt. And our next section is managing medical debt. Now, medical debt, you know, before medical debt, we were talking about student loan debt. And that's mm-hmm. huge. Medical debt can be huge also, but there's... It can be devastating. It, 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 uh, it, absolutely. So medical debt is, is a result of not paying your medical bills, though. Right. So it doesn't become a debt when you get medical care. Right. It becomes a debt when you don't pay it. Correct. And so we have to be careful. And we, we uh, even if we have insurance, Sal, you were talking about that before. Right. When you have insurance... Uh, you still have to look at your medical bills. Right. There's uh, an explanation of benefits. You'll see uh, what the uh, medical provider has pay, uh, charged, what your, if you have insurance, what your insurance company has paid on your behalf, and then what you owe. That is the amount that you have to pay. And you may get more than one. So you keep an eye out for your, 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 those uh, explanation of benefits. These are letters you're getting in the mail. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you don't receive it, doesn't mean you don't owe it. Call the medical, uh, call the medical department, uh, the billing department, mm-hmm. and square away with them, because it's not going to go away. It's going to follow you forever. <laughs> and you do have to stay on top of right. it. Um, my husband uh, recently had surgery, and we keep getting a bill from I'm going to say the anesthesiologist, and it turns out that um, it wasn't paid by the insurance company because of a coding error right so it could be as simple as a coding error uh that that uh, caused that to happen right. and your insurance company is not at fault your medical uh billing department is not at fault 
it's always going to fall on your shoulders. So mm-hmm. it doesn't li- it doesn't uh, remove the liability from you. Exactly. And it's going to go against your credit. Exactly. That's why you have to stay on top of it. So the sequence basically is that you receive your medical care mm-hmm. and then you receive your bill for your medical care. Right. And then your medical bill is not paid and that's when it becomes medical debt. Right. And so, yeah, you have to definitely stay on top of it, even though <coughs> if you're not feeling good after you get medical care, <laughs> you it's, still have to stay on top of it. Especially after you look at your bill, you don't feel well. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so make sure that you're looking at your actual bill when you get it. Right. Uh, read it carefully. It could be, you mentioned explanation of benefits and right. EOB. Oh, an EOB is not a bill. No. It's just an explanation. <coughs> it's a document that lists the charges. Um, if it is a bill, review it carefully. Uh, <coughs> uh-huh. Did you receive the supplies that were on, on that bill? Uh, if you have insurance, like we said, check that your insurance company paid what they were supposed to pay. Did he pay for the uh, $30 uh, Tylenol pill? <laughs> Gosh. <coughs> if you do not owe what the bill shows you owe, then you act quickly right. and dispute it. Okay, so try to negotiate a lower payment amount. So if the bill is accurate, but you can't pay it in full, right. then that's when negotiation comes in. And sometimes you can do that at the time of service. You mm-hmm. can talk to the to the uh, medical provider if there's something that they can do <coughs> to help you minimize that, that bill. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, once you receive that bill, you know, you can settle. Uh, and sometimes talk to your provider as well or the hospital. Sometimes there are some uh, payment assistance programs. Yeah. And in some cases, there, you know, there's some great souls out there that will come in and, and wipe off some organizations, some churches will come in and, and pay some medical bills for, for yeah. unsuspecting uh, debtors. So the, <coughs> so the first option is to try to negotiate for a lower payment. Right. Then option two would be to set up a payment plan. Right. You might be able to pay a lower set amount each month until the debt is paid off. And then we have a third option, uh, try to settle the debt. This means negotiating for a reduced overall balance that is considered a full payment. Right. And as long as you do all of that, all of those options, before you become delinquent or in collections, right. then that's when it gets a little scary. So, and like you said, there's another option, Sal. Uh, option number four would be to work with a nonprofit credit counseling organization. Uh, they can help you through your medical debt situation as well. Right. Okay. And also you could, uh, you know, uh, go into another website, www.usa.gov, and you search for credit counseling. And that'll give you some more resources that you can include with the Federal Trade Commission. And, um, you know, you you had mentioned, Sal, that uh, medical debt can be, what did you call it? Devastating. Devastating. So much so um, that considering bankruptcy, which would be a last, right. last yeah, resort, resort, last resort. I mean, there's also... A- Chapter 13, where you you set up a repayment plan to pay that debt. Uh, but the very last resort would be a Chapter 7, where they liquidate that debt. Um, you know, uh, it, it, sometimes it's insurmountable. I mean, you, uh, I'm getting a little personal here. Uh, one of my children um, needs a, a, uh, a sonogram, and even with insurance, it's close to $2,000. I mean... That's with insurance. That's the negotiated price. Mm-hmm. Now you have people out there that don't have insurance or very minimal insurance, where they're not getting their their services negotiated. Now you're talking five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and they may be making twenty five thousand a year. Yeah, I mean that's devastating. That's that is devastating. That is devastating. So. Um, just a, a brief, uh, bankruptcy is a legal process that helps people who can't pay their right. debts. But and talk to your, your financial advisor, your, you know, your attorney. Get, yeah. Let them give you the advice that and you need. Exactly. And you can get some legal help uh, by visiting um, another government agency, HTTPS. Um, co- let's see. Let me get this right. It's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash lsc.gov.gov and find a legal aid program 
Or if you just type Depending. in lsc.gov, make sure it has the HTTPS the sec colon. The secure pro uh, yeah, yeah secure forward one. slash forward slash. Okay. So if you'd like to join the conversation, don't hesitate. Our number is 214-431-5032. We're going to continue to talk about medical debt. Uh, let's talk about medical debt in collections and credit. All right. I like that. No, we don't like that. The th there's, I so like talking about it. You like talking about, about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. You know, put people straight on this. Yeah. Exactly. We right. want to be sure that you're informed so you can uh, make those decisions. So if you don't know by now, there are three nationwide credit reporting agencies. What are they? Which ones are they? Which ones are they, Sal? TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. There you go. And, and these agencies do, do not place medical debt on credit reports until they're 180 days after the date of the first missed payment. Right. So they are considered debt, but they give you some leeway. Right. Because it's something that's out of your control. I yeah. Mean, sometimes uh, your insurance company will not pay and the provide, well, they take a little longer to pay. So the medical provider, I mean, the uh, medical provider or billing company is they're, going they're, to send it straight they're to. Quick, they're quick yeah. to put it in collections. Right. And yeah. very quick to take it out. Okay, good. Very slow to take it off. Mm -hmm. um, from a lender standpoint, I had to bring this back to lending. Um, if we're using an FHA loan, uh, we're not considering medical collections as a, um, because we understand that this can be a one-off situation, uh, something that you're not, that you're not wanting to pay, but you're not able to for whatever reason, and they understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so, me so medical debt that went to collections, but has since been paid is not a factor in your FICO definitely score. Definitely not. But unpaid medical debt in collections is a factor. Right. So that's important to know. Um, Although they'll consider lenders will consider. Yeah, it's uh, a smaller impact, right? A smaller impact on the medical, but mm -hmm. it does impact your FICO mm -hmm. or your credit score, mm -hmm. and that FICO score will impact your ability to obtain financing or financing with more favorable terms. All right. Okay, so we have gone through a lot of information today when it comes to managing debt. Bring it on. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of information and so I think the the big takeaway is understanding where you are now and understanding where to go if you need help exactly right. and uh, so we recommend always annual credit report All right get an annual dot credit report gov. talk to your right dot gov look at your credit report you don't necessarily have to get a pay for your credit scores just understand your credit. Look at it. Um, don't wait till you're actually in uh, in a situation where you can't make the payments. As soon as you know that, call your uh, call a lender. Uh, see what they can do for you. Uh, call a nonprofit organization. See what they can do for you. Call or uh, visit the websites that we had given you. We'll have this information on our website, but don't let it just linger there because it's not going to get any better. Try to addressing it up front. Uh, so it's understanding your debt, understanding where to go, and how to deal with it. And how to manage it. Right. Absolutely. Okay, so our mission here at the Reba Show is to inform you and to serve you. So we bring you information that will help you in your home ownership process. Our hope is that you'll engage with us here at the Reba Show and become a loyal fan of this show. So please make a note and listen every Tuesday at 2 at fbrn.us. We're in Studio A. So um, we're a nonprofit. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We volunteer to give you this information so you will have that knowledge that you need. You can always reach out to us by email. Reba show at Reba connect dot org and that is spelled H R E B A show at H R E B A connect dot org. So this uh, this episode is available as a podcast on the Reba show page uh, at FBRN dot US and also on our website and on YouTube and on YouTube fish. Uh, we 
we're also on Facebook Live. We've been streaming right. Facebook Live also. And, of course, if you'd like to make a donation for us to continue uh, funding this program, uh, you can reach out to us as well. Go Please to our it. website, rebaconnect.org, and click the Donate button. We'd really appreciate that. So, again, my name is Leticia Gallegos, President and CEO of the Hispanic Real Estate Brokers Association. Wait, 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 wait. What? What about the golf tournament? Okay, oh, no. we're running out of time, I know, that's fine. but <laughs> we're running out of time, but we're going to have more information next week. Stay tuned. We have a golf tournament that's a fundraiser for our organization. And with that, uh, the funds that we raise, we are able to give out higher education scholarships that we're really proud of. And so that golf tournament is May 11th. And it's at Diamond Oaks Country Club. You can visit our website and learn all about it as well. In June, June is National Home Ownership Month, and we're going to have a home ownership fair, a home buyer fair in June. And we are going to bring you more information about that as we get closer to the date, but we want you to come out and check that out as well. Check out on our Facebook. That's right. Our Facebook so we have, website. we're so glad that you are listening. We're so glad to have you here. And I'm signing off, Leticia Gallegos, with my co-host. Salvador Villalobos. Come back and listen to us next week, next Tuesday. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and thanks for listening. Peace. Hey, this is Leticia. And this is Matt. Catch us on The Reba Show every Tuesday from 2 to 3. On our show, you'll be able to hear from the experts everything about home ownership. Tune in on Tuesdays at 2.